Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October-November 2022, Paper 2, Variant 2, for CI IGCSC Physics. In this lesson, we will discuss these questions in detail, so you can improve your conceptual understanding, and also you can have better understanding of all the topics from IGCSC Physics. Let's study together. Let's improve together. In today's class, we are talking about October-November 2022, Paper 2, Variant into. And total time for this exam is 45 minutes and there are 40 questions on this paper. You need to answer all of them. And total mark for this paper is 40. So it simply means that you have 40 questions on this paper and you have 45 minutes. So time is quite limited. So you have to be very quick to answer multiple choice questions in your final exam. Now the question is that how we can improve our techniques and how we can solve the maximum possible questions in final exam. One way you can improve your techniques is before exam, always set time and do paper under time conditions. So in this way, you can improve your techniques, you can also improve your methods, then you can speed up yourself. So you can increase your speed of problem solving. Second way is in your final exam, don't spend a lot of time on one question. If you get stuck with one question, you can use elimination method. You can eliminate options and then you can choose the best possible option. So don't spend a lot of time on one single question in your exam. Otherwise, you will not be able to attempt all the questions. And also, if you are running out of time, it's better to answer question as quickly as possible instead of leaving unanswered questions. So try to attempt all of them. So the best way is before exam, set time and do paper under time conditions so you can improve your techniques. That is the best possible way. And the second best approach is use elimination method in your final exam. And don't leave any questions unanswered. Attempt all of them. I hope you will follow these techniques and you will improve yourself. For question number one, we need to find out which measuring devices are most suitable to determine volume of about 200 ml of liquid and diameter of a thin wire. So we need to measure volume of a liquid. And volume of a liquid, we have two options. We can use measuring cylinder or we can use ruler. But volume of liquid, you cannot determine using ruler. So the best option we have in this case, measuring cylinder. So we can use measuring cylinder and we can find out volume of liquid. So we have to use measuring cylinder. So our answer can be ARP. Now the second thing we need to understand is diameter of thin Fire. Diameter of thin wire, it can be up to few millimeters. Now we need to understand which instrument we have to use. We have three different options. We can use micrometer screw gate, we can use ruler, or we can use measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinder 100% is not possible to determine diameter of a wire. So we can simply eliminate this one. Meter rule is also not very precise because the precision of meter rule is 1 mm. And precision of of micrometer screw gauge is 0.01 mm. So the best option is micrometer screw gauge. So because this is more precise, so we will be using micrometer screw gauge. So this is for the wire micrometer screw gauge. So the answer for this question is A. For the second question, it is given to us the diagrams show speed time graphs for four different bodies moving for 6.0 seconds. Which body travel the least distance? So we need to calculate least distance. And we have speed against time graph. And area under speed time graph, this area under speed time graph. So let me rewrite this one. Area under speed time graph. Speed time graph. 
a under speed time curve represents distance so simply we can say a under speed time graph is equal to distance a under speed time graph represents distance so the proper way to say represents distance now we need to compare areas if you look at these given options if you look at this one this is the largest area so this cannot be the answer this is also not possible answer because this area is greater than these two areas now simply we need to compare these two areas in order to compare these two areas i will simply draw a line so i will sketch these two graph on one graph so for the second graph b you can sketch like this here so we can sketch the second graph on graph a and we can draw this line this is up to four so this is now we can compare these two you can also do calculations but i want you to understand by comparison because this is very fast approach now in this case we need to understand this area is common so we need to simply compare this area i can draw this orange line here so this area we have to compare this area with with this area so you need to see which area is greater so i hope you will say in this case this area is larger so it means this is representing larger distance and this is representing the least distance so the answer for this question simply we can say is b so b is the answer because this is representing the least distance so then so for this one is b you can also calculate area but this is a quick way to answer this type of problem so the answer is b for our third question we need to find out which statement describes the relationship between mass and weight and we simply understand weight is equal to mg if a body has a mass and body is in a gravitational field body will experience a force and that force we call is weight so let me write down what is weight weight is simply force of gravity on a body force of gravity on a body due to its mass due to its mass in a gravitational field due to its mass in a gravitational field in a gravitational field so it simply means that weight is the effect in a gravitational field Field. So weight is the effect of a gravitational field on a mass. So it simply means that if there is a gravitational field and body has mass, you place mass in a gravitational field, gravitational field will apply a force on the body. Or simply we can say mass will experience a force. And that force we call is gravity or simply you can say weight. You can also imagine like that. Imagine that we have a gravitational field. So this gravitational field is pointing downward. So simply we can draw uniform gravitational field. And if we place a mass inside, imagine that this one is a mass M inside. So it will experience a force that force is downwards. And that force we call is weight. Or you can say force of gravity. Now, if you look at given options, mass is the effect. No, weight is the effect. So this one is not possible. Mass is the effect no weight is the effect of gravitational field on a mass so this is not possible b is also not possible weight is the effect yes weight is the effect of a gravitational field on a mass so this is a proper way how you need to understand what is weight weight is the effect of a gravitational field on a mass means when mass is in a gravitational field mass will experience a force that force is the weight so then so far this one is c weight is the effect of a magnetic field no gravitational field so this is also incorrect so then so far this one is c for question number four it is given to us the diagram shows four pieces of laboratory apparatus which pieces of apparatus are used to find the density of a liquid so first of all we need to understand density of a liquid density of a liquid simply is equal to mass over volume mass over volume in order to find mass we need to use balance to determine mass we need balance and to determine volume of liquid we need cylinder we need 
cylinder. So the answer for this question is B because we need balance and we need measuring cylinder. We don't need stopwatch. We need this one and we need this. So the answer for this one is B. For question number five, it is given to us the diagram shows a meter rule MN on two sports P and Q. Two loads are placed on the rule as shown in the figure. The rule rests steadily on the sports. Which row is correct? Now in this case we need to understand this meter rule is not moving. It is not rotating. So what exactly it means? It means this one is in equilibrium. So simply we can say this one is in equilibrium. If it is in equilibrium, it simply means that the net force on this one in any direction has to be equal to zero. Net force is equal to zero in any direction. I mean along x-axis, along y-axis, net force has to be equal to zero in any direction. And the second condition for equilibrium is net moment has to be equal to zero about any point. Net moment has to be equal to zero about any point. So these two points we need to understand about any point. Now, if we get given options, total moment about M. If we place our pivot here, net moment about this point has to be equal to zero. And if we place our pivot here, net moment about this point also has to be equal to zero. So it me simply means that net moment about M has to be zero, net moment about N also has to be equal to zero. So the answer for this question is D. So the point you need to understand is net moment about any point. When object is in equilibrium, net moment about any point has to be equal to zero. So this is the point what you need to understand. Not only clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment, that doesn't make any sense. That is not right physics. If you simply remember equilibrium means clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment, you will not be able to answer tricky questions. You need to understand clockwise moment will be equal to anti-clockwise moment about any point. Or simply you can say net moment about any point has to be equal to zero. Maybe some of you will choose this one. You will say, oh, this is. This is not right. This was only right if it was given to you. Clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment about this point are equal. And clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment about this point are equal. Then this can be the answer. But this one is wrong. It's telling you total moment about N, total moment about N. So this is incorrect. So the answer is K. For question number six, it is given to us the diagram shows an object moving at a constant speed in a circular path in direction shown. A force acts on the object to keep it in the circular path. In which label direction does this force act when the object is in the position shown? So simply you need to find out force direction means direction of centripetal force and this body is moving in a circle. So the centripetal force has to be directed towards center of the circle because speed is constant. So direction of force has to be to the center. So then so far this one is D. For question number seven, it is given to us a trolley of mass four kilograms traveling with a velocity of 4 meters per second collides with a trolley of mass 2 kilograms traveling with a velocity of 2 meters per second in the same direction. After the clean, the velocity of 4 kgs trolley is reduced to 3 meters per second. What is the velocity V of the 2 kilogram trolley after the collision? So everything is given to you in this figure. So we have 4 kgs velocity is given that is 4 meters per second, 2 kgs velocity is 2 meters per second. They are traveling in the same direction we have velocity after collision so we can draw the line here so velocity after collision is given and the mass we have 4 kgs and we have mass 2 kgs we need to find out velocity of this so this is very basic question about conservation of momentum so simply we can say in this case momentum before collision it has to be equal to momentum after collision because in this case there is no net external force acting on the system. So this is an isolated system. So momentum has to be conserved. We have to take one direction as positive. So we will take in this case to the right is positive because momentum is a vector quantity. So if you look at momentum of this one, so we can simply write on mass times the velocity. Velocity is positive because this is to the right. So the momentum of this one, we can say, will be equal to 16 and this has to be plus. How about momentum of this one? I hope you will simply say this one has to be 4. And momentum of this one also positive because 
it is still moving to the right so the momentum of this one is 12. how about momentum of this one we can simply say momentum of this one is mass time its velocity so here we have 16 plus 4 that simply we can say this is equal to 20. 16 plus 4 this one is equal to 20 so simply i can write down 20 here then we have 12 plus we have 2v so we can subtract 12 and we left with 2v so here we have 8 and here we have 2v so v from here simply we can find that will be equal to 4 meters per second so then so far this question is v so this is how you can approach this is basic question about conservation of momentum for question number 8 it is given to us an object falls towards earth's surface what happens to the gravitational potential energy and to the kinetic energy of the object so simply we can imagine for this question an object let's say the mass of the object is m and this object is placed in a gravitational field in a gravitational field and we can also imagine height of this one so the height of this one is h if there is no gravitational field and this mass is placed this mass will just stay there but in this case there is gravitational field we are assuming there is gravitational field so you can imagine that this pen it has certain mass m and this one is in the gravitational field so i'm holding this one here and if i let it go what will happen to its speed you will see its speed will increase mean its kinetic energy will increase and its height is decreasing from the surface so its potential energy will decrease so simply we will say in this case gpe will decrease and kinetic energy will increase because the speed of the object will increase and total energy is conserved so then so far this one gpe decreases and ke increases so then so far this one is p because gpe decreases ke increases for question number nine it is given to us a boy takes 0 0.60 seconds to lift a book of mass 0 0.60 kgs from the top of a desk and place it on a shelf the top of the desk is 0.80 meter above the floor and the shelf is 1.7 meters above the floor. The gravitational field is 10 newtons per kg. We need to find out which power does the boy run. Now, first of all, let's try to understand what is power. Power simply is equal to work done per time. So we can say power is equal to work over time. So this is first thing we need to understand. And in this case, the boy lift book from the desk to the shelf so we can draw this dotted line here from this point to this point so what is the change in height so change in height in this case we can find out delta h delta h in this case will be equal to 1.7 minus 0.8 so this is simply equal to 0.9 meter so this is the change in height so in this case the boy is lifting the book up so the work done by the boy is equal to the change in gpe of the book so we can simply say this one is equal to work done by the boy this is equal to change in gpe of the book so we can say change in gpe over time and change in gpe simply is equal to mg delta h divided by t and mass of the book is given that is 0.60 so we can say this is mass of the book and value of g we have to use 10 delta h is 0.9 and time taken is 0.60 so simply we can cancel 0.6 with 0.6 so remaining we left with 9.0 and the unit of power is watts so then so far this question is c so this is how you can answer this problem for question number 10 it is given to us a mass is lifted from rest on the ground to point y there is no air resistance p is the increase in gravitational potential energy of the mass and q is the kinetic energy of the mass at y which expression is equal to the mechanical work done on the mass it is given to us it is starting from rest so it simply means that the initial kinetic energy that is equal to zero now let's try to visualize this one so simply you can imagine in this case this is a block this is a box and this is placed on the ground you can imagine my hand is a ground and if i do certain amount of work on this one so i will increase its gpe but at point y if it is still moving so it means it also has kinetic energy so in this case the work done by me will increase the gpe and also it will increase the kinetic energy of this block so simply we can say in this case the work done 
is equal to change in GPE, change in GPE. So this is just conservation of energy. Change in GPE plus change in kinetic energy. In this case, change in increasing GPE is given that is equal to E. So we can replace this one with P. And change in kinetic energy is equal to Q because initial kinetic energy is equal to zero. So the work done in this case has increased the GPE, gravitational potential energy, and also it has increased the kinetic kinetic energy. Work is a way of energy transfer. So when you do work on something, we can transfer energy. So in this case, I did work on this one. I give energy from myself to this block and that energy increase the kinetic energy of this block and also GPE of this block. So work is a way of energy transfer. When you do work on something, it means we transfer energy to something. Very important concept you need to understand. So the answer for this question is 8. So simply we can say answer for this one is 8.